welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for this 27th day of September. And we are winding down the month of September and getting ready to go into October. And so I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Amen. And He is the only one that can save you and give you eternal life. No man can do it. Not even Mary can do it. And she is not the mediator between God and men. It's the man Christ Jesus who is 100% man and 100% God. For he is God manifest in the flesh and he came down here to die for our sins. Mary didn't die for your sin. No Pope died for your sin. No man died for your sin. Baptism can't save you. Water can't save you. It just gets you wet. Uh, those things cannot do anything for your soul. So you need to trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today in order to be saved and have eternal life and be able to spend eternity with him. Amen. And if you don't, well, you're going to end up perishing in your sin and burning in hellfire for all eternity. And then you'll get cast into a lake of fire. And, friend, you don't want to go there. No, sir. No, ma'am. Nope. Don't want to go there. Amen. All right. So today's topic is going to be titled, No Rope Needed. Amen. Before we get into the topic, we're going to sing today's scripture song. And so today's scripture song is from John eight thirty two and 36. So... Sing along here with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. Amen. John 8, 32 and 36. And, and ye shall, shall know the truth, truth and the truth shall, shall make you free. If, if the Son therefore shall, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Amen. And ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. make you free, you shall be free indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free, if the Son therefore shall make you free. Ye shall be free indeed. Amen. That is the truth right there. So if you trust the truth and believe it, the truth that Jesus saves and he will save your soul and what he did on the cross, he will set you free. Amen. All right. So we'll put that aside and sing that again towards the end of the broadcast. But now it's time to get into today's topic for the 27th. And it's titled again, no rope needed. And it says here in John 4.11, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. John 4.11. And this is the woman at the well. And looks like we're going to be uh, talking about her today. Amen. So today's author is K.M. And that is the initials for, I believe that's Ken McComas. Let me see, KM, yep, that's Ken uh, McComas, and he's from Ritman, Ohio. So let me read you what he wrote today on this topic of no rope needed. All right, it says here, The Samaritan woman said to Jesus that he had nothing to draw water from this deep well. That presents a rather uh, bleak picture, a disappointing situation for a thirsty man. Jacob's well presents a challenge, labor, toil and trial uh, there is not um, there is not real assurance of getting water at all if the rope doesn't break if the strength to draw uh, water holds out if the rope is long enough to reach the water if the well has not dried up if the uh, pail doesn't leak if the water has not become contaminated if conditions uh, permit your thirst may be uh, slack, may be slacked. Um, so, in a similar way, many Christians will try to be spiritual. The whole matter is uncertain. Their Christian life becomes a, a real drudgery. Each day begins with a dreadful thought of how, or excuse me, a dreadful thought of all the things which have to be done. They then decide the well is too deep. They uh, have nothing to draw with, and if they make it through the day, it will be a weary 
exhaustive experience to just get through by the skin of their teeth. Now, let's look momentarily at the other side of the picture our Lord presented. Amen. So let's look at the other side of this picture. The indwelling Holy Spirit is likened unto a fountain springing up of its own energy. It throws a crystal flood into the air. It sparkles like gems in the sunlight. Uh, pails are not necessary. No hoping uh, sub the supply is uh, no hoping the supply isn't exhausted, and no laborious effort of drawing up a long rope from a deep well. How much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? Luke eleven thirteen b. Amen. So. You got the Holy Spirit living inside you, you're saved, and you got the Holy Spirit living inside you, let Him uh, fill you up with that uh, living water, and you get that living water from Jesus Christ when you trust Him as your Lord and Savior, and that well is overflowing, amen, so let us uh, let it flow today freely, amen, and let's not uh, quench the Spirit, let's let Him work freely and uh, take over and not uh, be spiritual, try to be spiritual by yourself, because you can't be spiritual. It's the Holy Spirit that uh, gives you that uh, spiritual um, stuff there. Amen. So let's let him work in us. And just it's guilty of not allowing him to enough. Amen. So that's kind of convicting there. So let's make sure that we're allowing the Holy Spirit to work in us. And that living water to come out. Amen. And praise the Lord. Alright. So that is the end of the topic. No rope needed. Amen. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and get into today's hymn and hymn story. And so let me grab the hymn song book here. I was looking at this um, book here that I have um, that I bought uh, a while back. It's titled Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs. And so I thought I would look in this book to see if there's any extra stanzas here uh, compared to the book that, uh, that I have, the Then Sings My Soul book. Uh, book two, and so let me give you the author here before I start reading the stanzas here. All right, so the author is Charles Wesley, and this is titled "The Love Divine, All Love Ex Loves Excelling." So written by Charles Wesley and John uh, Zun Zundel, Z, Z U N D E L Zundel, and so I'll go ahead and um, try to sing this. For you. Hold on, let me get the tune here. See if I can recognize this hymn. <clears throat> Alright. Let's see here. Alright, yeah, I think I recognize it. Alright, let's go ahead and try to sing it with the. Alright. <clears throat> um. Love excelling, joy of heaven to earth come down. Fixing us thy humble dwelling, all thy faith and mercy's crown. Jesus, thou art all compassion, pure and Founded love in our hearts. Visit us with thy salvation. Enter every trembling heart. Alright, so that didn't work because I lost where I was at. Alright, so anyway, and I was actually looking at the wrong hymn here, um, so I apologize about that. I was looking at the one across the page, and that one had five stanzas. This one only has four stanzas, so amen. So I apologize about that. I was looking at the wrong hymn in, my, in the hymn book here. Alright, so uh, I'll try this again without the, the background music, and so... It's titled, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. 
Amen. This was written by Charles Wesley and John Zundell. And so let me read this to you. It uh, says here, Love divine, all loves excelling, joy of heaven to earth come down. Fix in us thy humble dwelling, all thy faithful mercies crown. Jesus, thou art all compassion, pure unbounded love thou art. Visit us with thy salvation, enter every trembling heart. Breathe, O oh, breathe thy loving spirit into every troubled breast. Let us all in thee inherit, let us find that second rest. Take away our power of uh, sinning, Alpha and Omega be, and of faith as, the be as its beginning, set our hearts at liberty. Come, Almighty, to deliver, let us all thy life receive. Suddenly return, and never, never more than te uh, temples leave. Thee, uh, thee we would be always blessing. Uh, serve thee as thy hosts above. Pray and praise thee without ceasing. Glory in thy perfect love. Finish then thy new creation. Pure and spotless let us be. Let us see thy great salvation perfectly restored in thee. Changed from glory into glory till in heaven we take our place, till we cast our crowns before thee, lost in wonder, love, and praise. Amen. So that is the hymn there. And I thought there might be more stanza to it, but uh, I was wrong. So I was actually looking at the wrong hymn there when I was opening up the um, songbook there. All right, so I'll go ahead and read you the story now. And again, this was written by Charles Wesley, and it's uh, John Z uh, Zundel, and it was written in 1747. And the passage is from Second Peter 1 3. So let me grab the Bible here and we'll go to Second Peter 1 3. Alright, Second Peter 1 3. Let's see, get there. Alright, Second Peter 1 3. And it says, um, Alright, let's go ahead and start with verse 1 because this has got uh, some context to it. It says uh, here, um, 2 Peter 1 3, and I'm going to go ahead and read verse 1. It says, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Amen. So, and then verse 4 says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So I just want to read to those extra verses there to give you the context. Amen. All right. So put this back to the beginning and get a drink of water here really quick. I apologize about that. All right. So go ahead and get into the hymn story here. All right, so this is the story behind the hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. It says, After their marriage, Charles and Sally Wesley set up housekeeping in Bristol, England, heading up the Methodist activities there. Later, they moved to London so Charles could work more closely with his brother John. All the while, however, he was writing hymns there are a few stories behind specific hymns because Charles was just always writing them. He didn't need events to inspire him or quiet stretches of meditative time in which to develop his thoughts. He was just always writing hymns, and afterward he had few, if any, dramatic stories to tell about the occasions for writing them. Biographer uh, uh, Arnold uh, Delamore says about his poetry, he had inherited this gift from his father, and although it 
had undoubtedly been a resident in him since childhood, his conversion unlocked it and set it free. During his ministry, or excuse me, during his early ministry, he says little in his journal about his composing hymns, and indeed, this is true throughout his life. But he had uh, within him virtually a treasury of poetry. He constantly um, experienced the emotions of the true poet. His mind instinctively invested words with harmony, and hymn after hymn flowed from his pen. Henry Moore, one of his friends, later described Charles like this. When he was nearly 80, he rode a little horse, graying with age. Even in the height of summer, he was dressed in winter clothes. As he jogged leisurely along, he jotted down any thought that struck him. He kept a card in his pocket for this purpose, on which he wrote his hymn in shorthand, not infrequently. He had come to our house in City Road, and having left the pony in the garden in front, he would enter, crying out, Pen and ink! Pen and ink! Uh, these being supplied, he wrote the hymn he had been composing. How many hymns did Wesley compose? No one has been able to count them. In all, Charles wrote over 9,000 literary, literary texts of one kind or another, but not all of them should be classified as hymns. Experts put the number somewhere between 3,000 and 6,000. Among all of them, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, is the favorite of many. Charles' last hymn was uh, dictated to his, um, uh, his beloved Sally as he was on his deathbed in March 1788. It was short, simple, and picturesque. Predictably, it too became a popular one verse song among the Methodists. Amen. And this is that um, hymn there. So this was um, the hymn. It says, In age and feebleness extreme, Who shall a helpless worm redeem? Jesus, my only hope, thou art, Strength of my failing, flesh and heart. Oh, could I catch a smile from thee, and drop into eternity. Amen. So that was uh, the story behind the hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Amen. And that is the last one of the hymns from Charles Wesley. And tomorrow we'll be uh, singing and reading tomorrow's hymn and hymn story. will be um, from the hymn, Be Still My Soul, written by... Uh, Ka Katharina A. Von Schilgel That's S-C-H-L-E-G-E-L -E -E I'm not sure how you pronounce that And then John Sibelius S-I-B-E-L-I-U-S uh, Or Gene, I should say Not uh, John Gene Sibelius um, so, those are the authors of tomorrow's hymn, Be Still My Soul, and this was written in 1742, and the passage will be from Psalm 62.1, so that will be tomorrow's hymn and hymn story, amen. Alright, so put that aside, and go ahead and sing some scripture songs before we wrap it up, amen. Alright, so we'll go ahead and do yesterday's, and then we'll conclude it with today's. So, let's see, yesterday's was Romans 12.18. All right. Romans twelve eighteen. If it, if it be, be possible, possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. men. Amen. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men, live peaceably with all men. Alright, now we'll conclude with today's. 
John 8, 32 and 36. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Amen. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Amen. All right. Well, that'll be it for today's broadcast. But before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song and then tomorrow's topic for the devotional. So tomorrow will be the 28th and we'll be singing... 1 Thessalonians 2.13, and says, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, so you know how it says that we're supposed to pray without ceasing? Well, says here that uh, we're to thank uh, God without ceasing. So we're always supposed to be thankful to God without ceasing. Amen. Just like we're supposed to pray without ceasing. That's interesting. Just uh, That just popped out to me. So let's give thanks to God without ceasing. Amen. Just like we pray without ceasing. So, amen. All right. So that will be tomorrow's scripture song. And then tomorrow's topic will be titled, uh, Two Cases of Great Faith. And so we got Matthew eight ten B and then Matthew fifteen twenty eight A. So the second part of verse ten of Matthew eight and then the first part of verse twenty eight of Matthew fifteen. So that'll be tomorrow's topic, two cases of great faith. Amen. And then of course tomorrow's scripture song, or I mean tomorrow's hymn, uh, will be from the hymn Be Still My Soul, and then we'll read the story here. I'll read it to you and you can listen along. Amen. So, if you want to get yourself a box of these devotionals, they're available on the website here at www.timgreenministries.org. Amen. That's how you can get the Baptist Bread devotionals sent to you. And then the scripture songs are available on Brother Dean and Sister Patty's website at www.dailyscripturesongs.com. And then you can order this uh, book here that I've been reading out of. It's titled, Then Sings My Soul, Book 2. 150 of the World's Greatest Hymn Stories, written by Robert J. Morgan. And that's probably available somewhere on the internet, or you can look at that, your local bookstore. And of course, I was singing the hymn today from this uh, hymn book here that uh, was uh, written um, and per, uh, put together by um, Melody uh, Publications. And so you can get a copy of that. Uh, I got, let's see, do they have a website? I thought they had a website. Yeah, um, MelodyPublications.com. And so that's uh, titled Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs. And what they did was they went through and they found all the um, stanzas that were put uh, left out uh, in our uh, hymns and our hymn books. And so they put them all back in. And then they have scripture on the side here. And they give like a little uh, excerpt of... Um, of what the song's about, amen, and then who wrote it, and all that stuff, so it's a good book um, to have, amen, it's really thick and heavy, but uh, if you're uh, wanting to get a copy, this is what it looks like, this is the, um, I have the tan brown one, or the brown one here, that comes in three different colors, so you can go check that out on their website, amen, alright, so that'll be it for today's broadcast so thanks for watching and may the lord richly bless you until uh next time amen so lord will i see you tomorrow and remember jesus saves believe on him all right bye for now and thanks for watching